first time that I've ever talked to people that are not farmed. So a little nervous, but I'm used to like cursing and doing things like that. So if I do drop an F bomb, please don't get offended. I'm very passionate about this stuff. My name's Bobby. Uh, I'm a second generation fireman. I hail from South Jersey, uh, from Collinswood, which is right over the river. Uh, I work in Camden City. I've been I'm in my 13th year there. I've been a captain for almost three years. Uh, I worked all great assignments there in the city of Camden. Uh, it's the kind of redhead stepchild in Philadelphia. It's a really awesome city with a really lot of awesome things going on, and it's a city that has a history of a lot of fire duty, and I'll talk about that. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in science from uh, Newman University in Public Safety Administration, and I own and operate, along with my wife, Echo Fire Tactics, which is uh, it's an aggressive, street-smart approach to firefighting and leadership. It's basically, it's all of my experience. Put it in one thing, and I put it out there. So here we go. So I do I do lecture. I've lectured all over the country. I've been to Wisconsin. I've been to Connecticut. I've been I'll go anywhere and preach aggressive firefighting tactics and strategies. That's what I do. So there's me. Camden. I just plug Camden. There's a lot of great things going on in that city. If you guys aren't hip to it, um, I'll plug Citywide. Citywide does do some articles on Camden. It's a great publication. You want to check it out. So, second generation fire was my father. My father was a fire chief in College of New Jersey. He uh, was a career fireman there for 33 years. So, I grew up knowing that, well, my dad was a farm. I guess I thought everybody's dad was a farm. I mean, my parents were only child, so I didn't really know. You know, I went to the firehouse, and, you know, Santa Claus sometimes brought my gifts to the firehouse. I thought that was normal. I had no idea that that's, you know, it's different. But that's how I grew up. And I had no idea that it would morph into something that what it is today. So, I just kind of always thought that, okay, I'll be a farmer because my dad's a farmer and that's what I'll do. And it kind of just was, I went all my life. And as you can see, there I am doing my fireman thing. And I, my mom, I remember probably being like six or seven, she took me to it. My mom's a huge antiquer, junker, took me to a yard sale and bought a fireman. I still have the fire helmet and I have about four more because it turned into an obsession. My fire helmet collection is my big obsession. So the bug has bit me in so many different ways to lead me to where I am now. now that's my best friend Andy. Uh, it was our dream to be camping farming together. He didn't, wasn't able to live with you. He died of cancer when we were 23 years old. He actually had to turn the job down. Um, so this picture is important because it's been. My brewery became this is engine seven. Yeah, it's actually one of the busiest firehouses in the world. The fire, it's right in Camden on Kane Avenue. When I was a little kid, I would drive my bike into Camden and look at fires. I never took one picture. I never did anything. My mom worked for the Camden County Sheriff's Department, and my dad wanted to pick her up one day, and I saw a slime green fire truck drive in, and I was like, "What is that? Dad? Why is that fire truck slime green?" He's like, "That's." Fire trucks. And ever since then, I wanted to be in the fire trucks. The fire trucks are flying great. I was in the interest of the time of hot movie. So, we talk about chaos. The chaos of firefighting bit me at a young age. So, you think of emergency situations and houses on fire. I can tell you with 100% confidence that the calmest, coolest, most confident, happiest place for me is on the fire for a burning building. I am 100% confident. I am 100% cool, calm, collective. There is no, and this is kind of messed up, we've got to be profound. There is no other place in the world I would rather be. I love every second of it. I love it. I love going to fires. I love going to fires as a kid. I love going to fires now. I have no idea how I'm going to be able to retire and turn it off. It'll probably end up making me go nuts. But Engine 7, I had actually had a chance to spend five years designing it. It was Squad 7. Yeah, so the slime green fire apparatus. I just gotta refer back to my notes here so I don't miss anything. So Camden is the busiest fire department in the state of New Jersey per capita. And New Jersey is the most densely populated city in the United States of America. And we have the opportunity to fight fires in buildings that are have reached their lifespan. So a building is like a human being. It only has 75 to 100 years before it starts to crumble and collapse and fall unless you upkeep it. 
So, and there's a lot of fake abilities in Camden, and there's a lot of transient population, open air drug market, prostitution, all that stuff. So a lot of these vacant buildings have people in them. And we go in there, we're, we don't care if you're human being, we don't care if you're, what, you're, what you do for a living, what your religious belief is, male, female, sex, we don't care about any of that stuff. We know you're human being, we're gonna go and get you out. I don't care. I don't care if you're a drug addict, I don't care if you're a prostitute, I don't care if you're a drug dealer, I don't care. I've been in houses where carbon monoxide effects have been going off, there's been stacks of money, AK-47s, kids playing video games, but that guy, his carbon monoxide detector went off, and he knows he has kids sleeping in that house, and he wants to check. Did I call the police? No, I didn't call the police, because he's a father, doing a father's thing. I give a shit less out of his mom. I don't care. I'm on a cop. You can tell that hair cut on a cop. <laughs> <laughs> That's me riding my bike in Camden. Um, I've had my bike, Camden, it, it's a tougher city. I have a bike stolen twice, beat up a lot, um, but I, I just never, I couldn't stop doing it. I'm, I'm, I've been obsessed with seven inch job. So, I talk about the mental, I want to talk about the mental mindset of being, of being a farm. If you wanted to murder me, the best day to do it is when I go to work, because I'm a man of routine when I go to work. I put myself in a mindset when I wake up in the morning. My alarm goes off, my wife's sitting in this room, she will tell you that. I make a whole spectrum when I get out of bed, I make I wake everybody up, that's just how I am. I get up, I go downstairs, I shave, I brush my teeth, I put my uniform on, I'm out of the door at the same time, every day, same time. I leave work probably 30 minutes for work, probably 30 minutes before I should because I want to get in the city. I want to get in the city and I want to drive around. I want to see what's going on. I haven't been there in three days. I, I have four kids, I keep them very busy, so I want to get in the city, I want to see what's going on. But when I get in my truck, I turn it on, I probably listen to some very heavy metal music going in, but I put myself in a mindset. I put myself in a mental mindset that today is a day that I'm going to go to the first emergency scene in my entire life. I take my family, my beautiful wife, my kids, my parents, my loved ones, and I put them back here. I don't care about them when I'm working. I can't. I can't worry about them. I can't at all. I go and change. Uh, that's me as a young fireman. Here's the fire All right. It's a mindset. It's a mental mindset. That's how I get through the chaos of my job, by putting myself in the mindset. And I'm in that mindset for 24 hours. My shifts are 24 hours long. So I'm there 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. And as a supervisor, I'm a captain of an engine company. Engine company goes in, they put water on the fire, a ladder company throws ladders, and goes in and searches for people. As, as an engine company, I have three human beings' lives that I'm in charge of. I have to make sure that they go home in the morning. And my life, as horrible as it sounds, comes last. My life comes last. I'm a supervisor. And anybody in here who's a boss, it doesn't matter if you were, what you do for a living. Leadership is something I take very, very serious. Very serious. The first word that comes to my mind when I think of leadership is sacrifice. You're not only sacrificing for the mission, you're sacrificing for your people. I will die for my people. I'm okay with that. I don't fear death. You shouldn't either. I will sacrifice my life. I will put myself in a position to get these men home. I will do it. I have no problem with it. I will do it all day long, every day. So, chaos, you might think of that as a chaotic situation. To me, if I don't put myself in that mindset, I can't get out of that chaotic situation. Think about it. Has anybody ever gone to one? It was probably it was a bad day in your life. It was a bad day in your life. I never died. I don't know. Pick up the phone, you dial 911, and you want somebody like me coming. Your house is on fire and your kids are trapped inside. You want me coming. Because I will burn the side of my face off to your kids out that door. I will do it. I promise you I will do it. And I can't promise you every fireman's the same and takes it as serious as me. But it's the truth. It's the truth about me. All right, mental mindset. This is a basement fire. That's me going in the nozzle. I, I walked in that building. You can't sit. Close your eyes. Put your hands on your face. Stick your head in the oven. On the floor. That's what it feels like to be inside a fire building. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely awesome. I I wear. I'm fully encapsulated. I got an air pack on, so I lose my sight. I lose my smell. I lose my taste. And my 
feeling is inhibited when I was having shit. My ears are my best friend. My wife again sitting in the church will laugh because I'm, I'm, I'm tone deaf and I just have something here. But my ears are my best friend. They're my best friend for a lot of reasons. When my ears start to burn and melt, I know it's time to get out of that building or change position. If I can't find the fire, I can listen to it. Technology is coming to the fire service, but I don't use it. I, I'm, I, it's a crutch. I'm an old school guy. I came up in this job an old school way. With this burning building, that's me on the nozzle. I went in, I made a right and a left, and I went right into the basement. Up to here, flames coming up at me, in my boot, burnt from here in my legs. I still got a scar on my leg, and the guy next to me pulled me out. And you know what we did when he pulled me out? We threw a door over the hole, and we kept going until the fire. And that was, I was in, I was in a bad situation, but like that, it was over, we keep going. That's what we do in the fire service. That's what we do. You got a problem, we encounter it, we fix it, dramatically sometimes, sometimes it needs to be a dramatic fix, and boom, it's over. It's over. This was a great fire. Great, 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 great fire. And when I say great fire, because it was tough. It was a challenging fire. I love the challenge of the job. I want the toughest job, the hardest job, the hottest job. I want it every time. I want it every single solitary time. So being a fireman, is, again, it comes natural to me, but it comes with a price. It comes with a price. My body, I'm 35 years old. I've been doing this professionally as my career since I've been 19. My body's shot. My body is shot. I come home from work at 24 hours, I get a shower, my wife's rubbing icy hot all over my body. My hand's swollen, I got torn shit in my hand, my shoulder's messed up, my back's killing me, my knees are killing me, and I'll probably die of cancer. I'm okay with it. It's all good. And there's this big push in the fire service now, cancer, cancer, cancer. We should have been a cop. I don't know what to tell you. We operate in areas where there's smoke and nasty shit. You know, you gotta get over it. Can't think about that stuff. My job though, my career, has the highest divorce rate, or even on my second marriage, or even divorced once. Has the highest suicide rate of any job, any job. And has the highest rate for alcohol and substance. So, to do this job, you sacrifice so much. You sacrifice so much. You sacrifice your body physically and mentally. And there is nothing, I'm not sure, you know, I don't want to be cliche and get into it, but there is absolutely nothing in the world that will mess you up more than putting your hands on a, on a child that is not breathing and pulling them out, pulling into a situation where it's chaotic and you've got to knock them out in the streets and my kids out there and you got to go in and get them. And wait, you go in and get them and you can't find them. And you're in there, and it's, it's playing with your mind. It's playing with you mentally. This job mentally affects me every day of my entire life. And my hardest, the hardest part about this job for me is turning it off. I, I can't turn it off. So everybody has their name tag and it says what their chaos is. My chaos is personal life. I'm not good at it. I am not good at personal life. I'm terrified. I'm so confident here. I'm so confident here. In, in ways I can't even describe. I, I, it's, it's like euphoric for me. When I pull in to a block that's on fire, I get, I'm like, oh, yes, it's my happy place. It's my happy place. I know exactly what to do. In personal life, I don't. I don't know what to do. I have three kids and a stepdaughter. My oldest is nine, Bobby's nine, Ryan's seven, Kenny's seven, six, and my baby recently six months next Friday. And it's a learning curve every day of my entire life. Every day. My wife and I will bang heads about things that she thinks I should be doing, that I think she should be doing, that I'm sure all you have. I have all the same problems you have. I have bills, I have crazy people in my life, my parents are getting older, they're getting to be more like the kids, they're getting to be annoying, okay? <laughs> when I go to work, it soothes me. It soothes me, and I am scared to death to leave this job. I'm scared to death. I'm scared to retire. Because I have no idea, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with myself. Because this is where I excel. I don't excel out there in the street. I excel right there. So, to talk about me personally, and keep going about this. Um, you say um, my wife don't say um, you're saying um. 
So everybody's got a hobby, right? Like your hobby is, what's your hobby? Sports, what's your sport? Basketball, what about you with your hobby? and my wife's in there, I keep looking at her, but I can't, I don't have anything else but this. I don't, I love hockey, love it, but let me tell you something, I'd rather be in a fire all day long. I run my side business on all three of my days off. I collect fire helmets. I'm in about 13 group chats with all fire helmets. How many civilian friends I have? <laughs> Zero. When people, when I go to places, people are like, they tell me what they do for a living, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't. Sorry. You ever work at Sevens? I don't know. I did for five years. It's fucking awesome. That's, you know, and I'm not trying to be a dick or, you know, say I'm a certain way, but this is how I am. And it's, it's so hard to turn off. Personal chaos is hard to turn off. More fire pictures. Fire pictures. Every fire in the picture, every fire I was at, every single one of them, I made sure I made sure that. And when we, we're going to open up for questions. If you want to talk about it, we can talk about the fires. Uh, I want to talk about the guys that I work with, people I work with. These two guys right here are my family. They're not my friends, they're my family. This is a family. It's a, they, you hear about the brotherhood and all that stuff. But I, I'm, Family. I don't have a big family. I have my mom and dad, and aunt and uncle, and a cousin. That I'm not, uh, it's great, but that's my family. My my daughter Reese is getting baptized on Sunday. Those guys are coming, not my family. You know what I mean? They're my family. This is a steeped in tradition, rich in brotherhood type job. That again, I sound cliche, but I'll die for any one of these guys. And my kids are trapped in Burke Williams with these guys coming in here. You know, I, I just love it. Uh, that's my crew right here to the right. Uh, the two guys, him and him are millennials. Let me tell you about those guys. <laughs> Man, trying to try teach him the job that I love is the hardest thing for me to do. I come home frustrated, I come home pissed off because they're obsessed with one thing and one thing only, and it's this. It's all they care about. It's all they care about all day long to the point where I gotta have them put them on my desk when I go into work. You gotta put your phone on my desk, you gotta take it from me. The teacher's gotta take it from me. My crew is important to me. Again, it's about sacrifice if you're gonna be a leader and have integrity, because to me, to me, being a leader is all about integrity. It's all about your reputation. It's all about sacrifice. It's all about credibility. How many people are supervisors or are boss in job? Would you agree? All about credibility, all about reputation. All that. It takes one bad time to ruin your reputation. So you work so hard to keep it intact. Keep it one time. And in, in this job, in the fire service, you have bad days. And you make a dumb mistake. That dumb mistake. You could rescue 15 kids from a burning building on Tuesday. And Wednesday, you go to a fire and say it's hot. You're going to be called a sissy for the rest of your career, the guy who said it was hot. So that's the fire service in a nutshell. These two pictures uh, of me are in my darkest times in the fire department. My darkest times. Uh, I, I had to, I, I had to reevaluate what I was doing in life because, like, I caught up in the statistics. I got caught up in the substance abuse, the alcoholism, the divorce. That's that time. The, the year I, the year I split up with my first wife. I don't know how many fire deaths in the city of Camden, but I can tell you that I have my hand on every one of those persons in my family. Everyone, kids, pregnant ladies, everything. And you know what we do in the fire service? We go home, we go back, but we don't talk about it, which I think is ridiculous. There's a fully assistance program that you can go to, but if you're, if you're not a tough guy, you can talk about it. Well, I see a therapist every two weeks. I do, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed to admit it. She has saved my life in more ways than once, but I'll tell you what, this guy right here, 
threw himself at the point where he wanted to kill himself. He wanted to kill himself. And I had no idea why. I had no idea why. And the job, the job was the biggest. The thing I loved the most was the biggest part. But those are two pictures of me in the darkest time of my entire life. My entire life. Everybody has problems. Everybody has issues. I urge anybody, I'm the biggest proponent of mental health. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going and reaching out, talking to somebody, and saying, hey, you know what? I got a problem. If you think you got a drink of problem, I guarantee you got a drink of problem. Nothing. There's, there's no shame in it. There's no shame in it. I still struggle with it. Here I am, naked as a jaybird. So last January 31st of this year, I suffered a severe uh, traumatic brain injury while I was working. So in this job, in this chaos, in this job, because it's controlled chaos being in a fire, there's so many things happening, there's things flying around, you're going to get hurt. I mean, I've broken this thing three times at work. I've broken ribs. It's, you know, it is what it is, but traumatic brain injury, I didn't think that's what would happen to me, but I was doing everything right at this fire. Everything right at this fire. The fire was actually, yeah, the fire was actually terrible. It sucked. I didn't even get to go inside the burning building. It was a one-room fire, and I remember it came in, we, uh, we worked 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. It came in about 5.50, and I was sleeping, and I remember waking up, and it, it was a full time for house fire, so I didn't stop to relieve my bladder. I remember having to pee so bad. I just had to pee, and I'm like, all I'm thinking about, I'm like, I can't wait to get out of here. I gotta pee. I'm going home. It was career day at my son's school. I was gonna go in for a career day. My wife was seven months pregnant. She had to go to work that day. It was a great day to get her. Great day. So I'm picking up hose to go back, just like this in this picture. I'm like this, and I have. This coupling right here, which is a large diameter hose coupling, it was four inches. I had it right above my butt, right there. And it was hooked to a hydrant on a 30 inch water main. So, 30 inch water main is about 175 pounds of pressure. And it got charged accidentally and came up and got me right in the back of my head, right here where there's no cranial coverage. And I remember getting hit. I remember the, the one thing I remember most watching my helmet fly. I like, oh, yeah, my helmet. And I remember seeing the world go like this, and I fell. I don't remember anything after that until I woke up on the front of the fire apparatus. I, I told I got up and you know, radiated and shut the hydrant down. I had no recollection of that. I came to and I was blind. I was blind. Anybody blind? Anybody know someone who's blind? Let me tell you something. I have never been so scared in my entire life. I was doing ever. I mean, yeah, it hurt, but I'm putting water in my face. I'm grabbing people, and I'm like, I'm fucking blind. There's nothing I can do about it. And nothing's working. Nothing's working to stop this blindness. So EMS comes. They get in there. They're trying to cut my cut all my equipment off. They're arguing with me because I wear a first generation. We wear we encapsulate ourselves in a hood. And they make things safer nowadays and thicker. And my hood is old and thin, and I love it. They don't make it anymore. And they were trying to cut it off, and I'm trying to swing at the guy and cut it off because I don't want to lose my hood. So I'm arguing with EMS. They drug me up. They gave me fentanyl, which I can see why people steal their grandparents' jewelry and sell that shit for fentanyl because that stuff was, woo, knocked me out. My wife comes seven months pregnant. My mom was my biggest worry because she's a very dramatic person. And my friend Gabe, Gabe took this picture of me. Very nice man. Captain's my best eyes, but I'm laying there naked and I'm blind. And we don't really know what's wrong. We don't know what's wrong with me. And I was in the hospital for 14 days. I was in Cooper Hospital for eight. And I was over here at McGee Rehab, which is an amazing, very humbling place if you ever get a chance to go there uh, for four days. And that was my injury. I was out for about three and a half months. I couldn't walk. I couldn't, I couldn't do a lot of things. My plumbing wasn't working properly. My eyesight came back eventually. It took about 24 hours for it to come back. My right eye still messed up. But I tell the story because we're talking about chaos. And the chaos and the fire scene is what injured me. 
it was a miscommunication. A miscommunication on somebody took me out. Took me out. Put my ass on the ground. And to this day, I you know, probably struggle with this injury for the rest of my life with a brain injury. I forget things. I conveniently forget things and blame it on the injury when my wife tells me to do something like, ah, it's <laughs> brain injury. But I, I, I put the picture up in every lecture to make fun. There I am naked. Have that. When the Eagles won the Super Bowl, my wife and I, I couldn't watch TV, so I had my back turned to it, and we watched it. My, well, she watched it, I listened to it in my hospital room. It was a very interesting time in my life, to say the least. So, I think I'm wrapping up with this slide. Yes. So, chaos. My chaos is life. Personal life. Firefighting is not my chaos. Firefighting is my happy place. It is my happy place that I want to go to every day of my entire life, but unfortunately I can't because that would be you know, the arson that would do that. So I have to, I don't wish for people's houses to burn down, but if somebody's house is on fire, I really hope that I'm there. I really hope that I'm there on fire for the best place in the world to be. Absolutely nothing like it. It is the most fun you'll have with your clothes on, guaranteed. Guaranteed. 